Kind friends and companions, come join me in rhyme. Let us lift up our voices in chorus combined. Let us lift up our voices, all grief to refrain. For we may or might never all meet here again. Hey guys, welcome to traditional singing for the month of January. Uh, a very happy new year to all of you guys. Thanks for sticking with me in the new year. I hope that you enjoyed the videos from December. Um, so in the month of January, I wanted to cover a song. You just heard me sing a little snippet of it. It's called Here's a Health to the Company. Sometimes it's actually also called The Parting Glass. Um, but it's, it's not the same as the more famous song that goes by that title which we will certainly get to on another day. And, oh, but the song we're doing today uh, sometimes also goes by its first line. Kind friends and companions. Right? Kind friends and companions. Um, where did I get this song? Well, this song is kind of ubiquitous. It's sort of the unofficial anthem of uh, Renaissance fairs and uh, other late-night um, sort of ale-drinking occasions. So great, uh, a great song for so many different uh, occasions. I've heard it at sessions, at parties, um, you know, it's New Year's Eve. It's a great song for so many occasions. I mean, it, it, it would be easier to list the people that haven't done this song because it's just such a, a great classic. But um, I'd say if you want to start somewhere, check out The Chieftains. They've got a great uh, sing-alongable recording. If you don't already know the song. Anyway, so here's a health to the company. Kind friends and companions, come join me in rhyme. Let us lift up our voices in chorus combined. Let us lift up our voices, all grief to refrain for we may or might never all meet here again all right so i tried not to add too many bells and whistles so you can just get the um the main the main gist of it oh what do you know i guess what key i was in so i'm in c sharp minor um, the song is not in any particular key. Don't worry about that. This is just a key that I felt was comfortable, and I thought the ladies would be able to sing up an octave. Fine friends and companions, come join me in rhyme. That puts your highest note out of C sharp, for those of you who are interested. It's not too bad. So anyway, um, let's go over the words one more time. Kind friends and companions, come join me in rhyme. Pretty logical opening line, right? Let us lift up our voices in chorus combined. It's just beautiful stuff. Um, it, I, I love when they have noun adjective, you know, chorus combined. You know, instead of combined chorus, as we boring uh, modern folk would say. In chorus combined. I've also heard, by the way, there's a lot of versions of this song. So you might also hear people say... Um, Come lift up your voices, um, no. Kind friends and companions, come join me in rhyme. Let us lift up our voices in chorus with mine. So some people will say with mine instead of combined. But as, as I just said, I like the noun adjective uh, word order. So I go with chorus combined. Let us lift up our voices with cor in chorus combined. And then you get... A, a, a common um, feature of a lot of songs is you'll restate the first part of a previous line, but then the ending of that line will be different. So, let us lift up our voices in chorus combined. Let us lift up our voices, all grief to refrain. So you get that sort of um, reinforcement of that sentiment of let us lift up our voices, except this time it's all grief to refrain. 
for we may or might never all meet here again. And that line can sometimes be a little bit of a tongue twister because you're thinking, is it might or may never, or is it may not or never, or is it may never or might not? Um, so at least the way I've learned it, it's may or might never. No, wait, now I, <laughs> now I messed myself up. For we may or might never. Yes, may or might never. Um, all meet here again. So for those of you who already know the words, um, that probably was, uh, you know, quite, quite, uh, quite boring. But sometimes uh, you'd be surprised. You might actually forget the words that you, you know, you, you, you're pretty sure you know them and then you'll forget them in a tight spot. So having kind of like a fun little narrative in your head of the song um, will help you remember it. Um, so kind friends and companions, come join me in rhyme. Let us lift up our voices in chorus combined. Let us lift up our voices, all grief to refrain, for we may or might never all meet here again. Um, and by the way, uh, what I just did is actually something that I practice on all of my songs. I um, practice reciting the song as if it were simply a poem. What does that do? It proves to your you get to prove to yourself that you know the words of the song independent of the the melodic connotation so a lot of times we you know when you're singing along to the radio you kind of know the words because the musical cues in the song they they trigger your uh, sort of brain's muscle memory if you will to sort of sing these particular syllables even if you're not even remotely thinking about the story that the song's telling. So that's not what we want for traditional singing because um, we're not singing along to a CD or a karaoke track or a radio. You're telling a story every time you sing. And a lot of times you're gonna be singing solo. You might be singing with other people, but in which case it, it'll be a little easier. But the goal is to be able to sing these pieces solo. Um, and so you want to be have have the story sort of in your head independently of the melody. Although we, of course, marry them together. So anyway, kind friends and companions, come join me in rhyme, etc., etc. Uh, and I do that for all of my songs, uh, even the very long ballads. And so another thing it does, so I just talked about um, the memory aspect, making sure you have those words down. The other thing it does is it teaches you about the meter of the piece uh, and the word stress and where that needs to go. So for instance, let's take a look at this. Um, Here's a health to the wee lass that I love so well. In her style and her beauty, there's none her can excel. There's a smile on her countenance as she sits on my knee. There is no man in this wide world as happy as me. So let's take a look at the meter there. Here's a health to the wee lass that I love so well. In her style and her beauty, there's none can excel. There's a smile on her countenance as she sits on my knee. There is no man in this wide world as happy as me. Uh, hopefully you can tell that we're dealing with a triple meter. Um, there are some times where you have to fit four into one sort of um, beat. But in general, it's da di di ya do di da da do di one two three uh which is probably the second most common type of meter for ballads the most common meter is going to be the ballad meter um which believe it or not sounds really complicated but it's it's actually um one line of iambic tetrameter then one line of iambic trimeter and then that same thing again. Um, that sounds really complicated, but all it is, iambic means da da, short long, and then the tetra in the tetrameter means four, and the tri means three. So iambic tetrameter just means four da da's, and then iambic trimeter just means three da da's. So uh, if it's iambic 
tetrameter followed by iambic trimeter. It's just da 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 right? Um, and so that's, uh, think for that, for ballad meter, think of Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Right? <laughs> so anyway, that's the most common meter that we're going to deal with, but we're not doing that in um, this song. Sorry, that might have been a bit confusing. That is not what we're doing in this song. In this song, we're dealing with a triple meter. Um, what would it be? It would be uh, kind of a, technically it would be a dactylic tetrameter for you uh, poetry nerds. Um, like dun, 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 dun. Well, it's it's offset though. That's the confusing thing. It doesn't start on the stress. So it's got to pick up kind friends and instead of friends and it doesn't start on the downbeat. Um, but a stress followed by two uh, unstressed is a uh, dactyl. So anyway, uh, examining the meter is going to help you with your word stress and also where to place your ornaments. This is very important. Um, I used to just kind of put ornaments all over the place and, and sometimes it didn't sound that great. And then when I started recording myself and listening back, I realized that sometimes I was doing an ornament that just took too long on an unaccented um, syllable of, of, the, of the rhyme scheme. So if you're going to do an ornament, really, you know, consider putting it on one of the strong beats. So for instance, kind friends and companions, the pa of companions is the strong beat. Companions, companions, right? Just that little number, companions. That's one you can try. Um, don't try to fit it into one of the non-accented uh, syllables. So what's an example of one you wouldn't want to do? Um, let's, let's go to that verse we were doing. Here's a health to the wee last that I... Like on the that. That I love. There's just not enough time. And, and if you make time, you know, it can work, but it just... You lose the flow. So ornamentation still needs to stay in the flow. It doesn't mean that it has to be perfectly in rhythm. There is a little bit of leeway. But um, what you don't want to do is set someone up in rhythm, the listener, perfectly in rhythm, and then stall to do an ornament. So here's an example of what not to do. Here's a health to the wee lass that I love so well. Da, da. You hear how I, I had this very jolly sort of boom, ba, boom, boom, and then I went, huh, I'm going to do this ornament. Uh, yeah, and then and then the listener feels like, okay, well, this guy's just trying to do ornaments. Um, and it really detracts from the song. And that's something I have to be careful about, too, because sometimes, um, just technically speaking, my voice is not quite as agile as I would hope, and it takes me a li little bit longer to actually physically execute the ornament. And so sometimes I have to just... Um, you know, cut my losses and, and only do a couple of small ornaments um, in, in the service of making the song sound better. So, here's a health to the wee lass that I love so well. There's a nice one that I can fit in the meter. Love so well, love so well. That's a triad, right? Love so, love so well, instead of the usual love so well, or something of that nature. Uh, sounds like that on the piano. That I love so well. That's one that you can fit into the meter pretty easily. Um, saying the words as a poem that is without the melody is going to help you memorize the words and really a, a sort of internalize the story or whatever this whatever the song is trying to convey it's also going to help you with knowing how to accent the words of the song and where to place your ornaments and then third thing is if you ever want to set the words to a different tune it is going to help you a lot in that regard so if you kind of have an idea of 
which tunes fit which meters, then if you want to try doing a new setting, you'll be in luck. So let me give you an example of how to use that word stress that we talked about. Here's a health to the wee lass that I love so well. In her style and her beauty, there's none her can excel. There's a smile on her countenance as she sits on my knee. There is no man in this white world as happy as me. So there's a couple different ways I can stress the downbeats. Um, and by the way, I'm I'm keeping an internal rhythm going there. Yum, ba, da, yum, ba, da. I'm even tapping my foot on the downbeats. Um, and there's a couple different ways I can stress the downbeats. Um, first of all, with um, just volume. For instance, style and her, right? Style and her countenance, there's none her can excel. All right, that can get a bit boring after a while. You know, it sounds kind of pulsy, you know, kind of like, woo, woo. you don't want to get too pulsy. Um, you can also just draw out one of the consonant sounds. You know, for instance, there's there's a difference between style and style. Hear the difference? In her style. If I'm if I'm not accenting it, in her style and her. Now listen to this. In her style and her countenance. Right. So if you have a consonant available that that you can draw out a little bit. Uh, you can draw that out. Style and her count. Now the the k of countenance you can't draw that out because that's like a, a plosive sound um, or fricative, whatever it is. I forget the terminology, but it's not a uh, s not a sibilant that that um that has length to it. Countenance. So for the countenance, you're gonna want to just use a little bit of a swell there. In fact, sing this with me. So in her style and her countenance, let's just do that. So we're going to go style and countenance. Get a nice resonance on the ow. In a one, two. In her style and her countenance. Okay, and notice I'm doing this, right? Because I want that line to build up to the cow of countenance, right? Um, and and so, so whenever you're practicing a line of, of one of these songs... Um, I would really, really encourage you to stay on the breath. Now you're probably thinking, what, what the heck does that mean? Well, it basically means, um, imagine that you're blowing a straw, like in a, you know how when you were a kid, you would blow a straw in, in whatever drink you were drinking and it would bubble. So if you sort of come off the breath, meaning you lessen the pressure a little bit, there won't be any bubbles left, right? So when you're singing, even when you have those consonants that don't have the um, don't have the full vowel resonance to them, you still want to keep your breath kind of spinning, almost like you're still pushing those bubbles in the cup. So, in her style and her countenance, there's none her can excel. So I kind of. Um, I kind of just think of this like perpetual spinning uh, thing in my head. This is all this is all vocalist uh, mumbo jumbo speak, but um, it actually does help. Um, I, I I I didn't really start thinking about this stuff until four or five years ago, but it it really does help. Um, so here, let me show you what not to do. In her style and her countenance, there's none her can. Where basically at the, at the ends of the words, I'm I'm very much. Uh, sort of fading away. It's not that I'm physically taking a breath. I'm not going, <gasps> I'm not taking a new breath. It's just that um, my sound is diminishing and my sound is tapering at the end of each word. So, so don't do in her style and her countenance. There's none. Her it's kind of hard for me to even do that. It just feels very weird. Instead, in her style and her countenance, there's none her can excel. Right? Remember, the vowels are where your primary resonance is going to be. So, um, 
really, you know, let the vowels bloom. You have a nice voice. Uh, every everyone who's subscribed to my channel so far, I know all of you personally, and you all have great voices. So don't be <laughs> don't be afraid to let that vowel bloom a little bit. Uh, and the other thing to be aware of is that, especially in traditional Irish singing, um, a, some of your consonants are going to be vowels. I know, super weird, right? Uh, L, M, uh, even R. I've heard N. Let's see what else. If you had like a z or a sh, uh, zh, um, but anyway, there's these um, these consonants that can actually hold the pitch, right? So mm, anything you can hum, <laughs> any any consonant sound that you can uh, hum a tune to is uh, a valid a valid vowel. In Irish singing, in classical singing, that's a big no-no. You want to go for the actual pure vowels, like the a, e, i, a, o stuff. But uh, in Irish singing, it's fair game. So, in her style and her, there's the er, right? Her countenance, the n, right? Countenance, there's none. See, so what I'm doing there, I'm using. That what they're really called nasal vowels. You can tell there it's a nasal sound where if you plug your nose it stops. Try doing an M or an N and plugging your nose. <laughs> you just basically start choking, uh, or or the sound stops. Um, so for those nasals, you can use those to keep the breath going in between the words. Like I said, so. In her style and her countenance, there's none her can excel. <laughs> it sounds like uh, I'm being played on half speed or I'm drunk, right? But really, practice that. So pick a line of the song and practice that. Um, I'll I'll put the uh, I'll put I'll post the lyrics in a document and I'll I'll put them in the description so that you can have access to the whole song. So anyway, um, thus far we've talked about the the uh, value of reciting the words um, without the tune. We talked about the meter. Uh, we talked about um, possibly how how to set. Um, words to a new tune. You got to match the meter there. And then we talked about um, the word stress and different ways that you can bring that out. So either with volume or with the stressing the holding out some of the consonant sounds or another way of course is with an ornament, right? Um, speaking of which, I wanted to go over a couple of cool variations for this melody before I let you go. Uh, and then, of course, I, I, I will sing all the verses for you um, before I let you go. Um, but I, I didn't want to spend the whole time just teaching you, you know, the words um, bit by bit, because um, you can do that on your own time. So anyway, um, I had a couple of cool variations for you here. The first one is... Um, let us lift... So here's what it normally does. Let us lift up our voices. So the 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 vo of voices is that high tonic. So da da right the octave. Let us lift up our voices, and then it falls from there. That's the original. Here's a cool variation. Um, what you're gonna do? You're gonna briefly hit that that top note, but you're it, you don't give it much time. You actually flip down to the note right below it. So it sounds like this. Let us lift up our vo, vo, vo. Um, So instead of our voices, it's our voices. And then you, you do a little roll on the note um, below that. So I'll do it in slow motion one more time. Let us lift up our voices, voices. 
Um, now, if that little roll there is a little tricky for you, don't worry about it. Um, honestly, it's a little hard for me too, uh, depending on the day and how my throat, you know, how my voice is feeling. Sometimes it, right now I'm a little sluggish. Sometimes it's a little more agile. Um, but you don't have to do that. So you could go voices, right? Um, so how would you get from there into the next part? Well, it would sound like this. Lift up your voices, all grief to. So, voices, all grief. Okay? So, after the voices, the all would start on the same pitch. Voices, all grief to refrain. And then you'd be um, on, on, the tra- on the track to um, the rest of the song. So, I'll, I'll do it all in context. Let us lift up our voices, all grief to refrain. Pretty cool sounding, right? It kind of, um, it it sort of delays the the um, thrill of reaching the high note. So what you would do is you would want to do that variation on the first um, iteration of that melody in any one, like verse or chorus. And then on the second iteration, you would go up to the high note. So here's what it sounds like. Um, kind friends and companions, come join me in rhyme. Here we go. Let us lift up our voices in chorus combined. Let us lift up our voices, all grief to refrain. Right? So it kind of uh, it sort of delayed the satisfaction of hearing that high note until the um, the second phrase. So that's potential variation number one. Da 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 da. da. All right. Uh, another one is a super cool one on the lower part of the melody. Instead of going da 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 da, we're gonna go da 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 da. Pretty cool, right? So what we're doing is we're identifying the target note, which is da, right? So D, da, da, that's the target note. And instead of simply approaching it from above by two steps, ya, da, da, that's the original. Instead, we're going to um, do a little flip, a little roll and flip that goes below the, the target note and then lands on it. So da, 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 see how we went below the note? Da, 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 da. So in context, it would sound like this. Let us lift up our voices in chorus combined. Combined. Notice I'm doing a little bit of a, a, a little, uh, little flutter or flick on that first tone. Chorus combined. Before going stepwise down below the target note. Chorus combined. Try that with me. Ready and go. Chorus combined. Again and chorus combined. <clears throat> My voice is getting a bit, a bit tired. Oof. Anyway, I'll do that one in context so you can hear it. That would be a nice one again to do. Um, juxtapose it with the original you know because you've got two lines that have the same melody in a row so maybe do the original first and then that one so i'll show you how to do that i'll do the um i'll do the chorus so here's a health to the company and one to my lass let us drink and be merry all out of one glass. Let us drink and be merry all grief to refrain. There I did the original, right? You can hear my my upper range is, is starting to give out. Um, so anyway, the difference is da 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 da, and then da 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 da. Those are the two um, versions there. So so far we've had the da 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 on the voices, and then we've had this one on refrain on refrain. 
Um, another cool one is going to be right after that on the word all. Take a listen. Let us drink and be merry, all grief to refrain. That's a nice one. Let us drink and be merry, all grief to. So what that one does, um, instead of doing the usual, merry, all grief, just stay, merry, all grief. In that case, all stays on the same note as merry. In, in the variation, Mary, oh grief. We go we go back up and then do a little a little turn on the way down. Mary, oh grief too. Um so try that with me. Uh ladies, you can sing up an octave. Mary Forgive <laughs> Yeah, forgive that. Mm, one, two, three. Mary, all oh, grief, right? Mary, all oh, grief. And uh, you can connect the E and the A. Ah. Mary, all, oh, E, all, oh, right? You don't have to stop. Mary, all oh, grief. You, you can stop if you want to get a nice punch on the all. Oh. Mary, all oh, grief, too. But I find it easier to just, just go right through. Mary, all oh, grief to. Going back to what I said about um, keeping the breath spinning. So that's another one. All oh, grief to. That's another nice little variation. And oh, one that we already talked about is uh, for we may or might never all meet here again. Um, that one sounds kind of hard, but I bet you if you try it, you'll be able to get it. Um, and so I ended up in C sharp minor again. So, for we may or might never all meet here again. A good thing to keep in mind when you're trying to do these variations and ornaments is that don't don't stress too much about it. And the more you actually sing through it, uh, the better it's going to turn out. And it's, it's hard to describe what I mean by that, but basically um, sort of think of them as moving notes, notes moving towards a goal. They're not there for their own sake. They are, they are um, serving a purpose. They're going somewhere. So don't linger too long. Um, don't, don't fret too much about those, those quick moving notes. Um, you'd be surprised how agile your voice is if you just let it, basically, is what I'm saying. So... Um, for we may or might never all meet here again, here, uh, uh, uh. you know, you, you can actually practice ornaments by doing some very silly sounds like, um, for instance, uh, like, uh, here, here's one thing you can practice, um, <laughs> <laughs> right sounds ridiculous but it's just a laugh it's a laughing sound but what you're doing is you're getting those very quick iterations of different notes <laughs> right <laughs> and then maybe try to slow it down and make it more discreet <laughs> right and then eventually, now I'm not even very good at that, but that's a coloratura kind of technique from classical singing. But eventually, once you can actually get those iterations to be a little bit more clean, then you just take away the ha ha, the actual breath, the actual ha huh sound, until you have ah. And, and, and notice I'm trying not to add any consonants in there, because when you add consonants in there, then you're just cheating, right? Because um, anyone can go, da-da-da-da, that's not hard, but... That's a lot, lot harder with no consonants to um, delineate the notes. So, um, yeah, practice your laughing uh, for, for getting your, your notes a little more agile, a little more fluid. 
uh, for your ornaments. And then always sing through them. Uh, and then my last tip for ornaments is allow yourself to use vibrato. This is something that I actually um, became a lot more clued into in the last year or so um, by listening to a couple of singers that I really admire. Uh, there's a tendency in a lot of um, trad music to sort of frown on vibrato. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure why. It's very weird, but I guess no vibrato seems further from classical performance and therefore more, quote, legitimate, which is, that's that's really kind of a false construct. You, you can pretty much completely ignore that as far as I'm concerned. Vibrato is totally fine. It's a healthy way of singing. Um, and you'll, you'll be surprised how much it'll actually free up your voice and make it a little more agile. So, um, for instance, there are some ornaments that I physically cannot do unless I allow myself to use some, some vibrato. So, for instance, um, let's see. Uh, here's a health to the last that I love so well. In her style and her beauty, there's none her can excel. You know, I'm going a bit slow, right? Because um, cause my voice is a bit tired and, you know. But um, you can hear that vibrato that I'm using. That's, that's almost like my classical tone, really. Um, but if I keep my breath, if I keep my voice sort of spinning and I let that vibrato go, then my voice is naturally so relaxed. It, it, it's got this little sort of relaxed vibration to it, and then it can change directions more quickly. But if you force it to be flat, not flat as in pitch flat, but just straight, then it it, it just get, gets stuck on whatever pitch you're on. Uh, you know, if you start that, who wants to do an ornament? Then you're you're very um, you're very militaristic about that note you're on. Instead, uh, you know, you have a little bit more agility there. So I, I, I encourage you, um, pick a note like I just did. And practice those little fluctuations, those, or, you know, just in a scale, right? Okay, so those are my tips for ornaments. Um, sing through, you know, sing through to the target note. Don't, don't wait on those little notes. Uh, use vibrato, that'll help uh, free you up. And then practice that, that laughing and those kind of descending laughing uh, figures and try to find your voice's ability to iterate no, uh, many notes in a row. Because it's, it's in there. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people just don't know that they have that physical ability. But you do it every single time you laugh. The trick now is can you actually control the pitches of those iterations? All right, so the last thing I wanted to do uh, today is sing the whole song for you so you get an idea of how it sounds all together. Uh, listen for the word stress, uh, the accents, the uh, some of the variations that I'm going to put in there, and the ornamentation, um, as well as especially listen to the way that I um, create a continuous line um, by utilizing those nasal um, consonants and trying to keep some kind of resonance and, and trying to keep sort of that spinning throughout the whole line. And I will say one more thing. Occasionally I will stop that resonance on purpose to accent a particular word. Take a listen to that. Here we go. Kind friends and companions come join me in rhyme. Let us lift up our voices in chorus combined. Let us lift up our voices, all grief to refrain. For we may or might never all meet here again. So here's a health to the company and one to my lass. 
Let us drink and be merry all out of one glass. Let us drink and be merry all grief to refrain. For we may or might never all meet here again. And here's a health to the wee lass that I love so well. In her style and her beauty there's none her can excel. There's a smile on her countenance as she sits on my knee. There is no man in this wide world as happy as me. So here's a health to the company and one to my lass. Let us drink and be merry all out of one glass. Let us drink and be merry, all grief to refrain. For we may or might never all meet here again. Our ship lies at anchor, she is ready to dock. We wish her safe landing without any shock. And if ever we should meet again by land or by sea, I will always remember your kindness to me. So here's a health to the company and one to my lass. Let us drink and be merry all out of one glass. Let us drink and be merry, all grief to refrain. For we may or might never all meet here again. Thanks, and hopefully we will all meet here again for the next episode of Traditional Singing. If you really try to think of of every single note that you're doing sort of if you 